This question is about silicon and compounds of silicon. The reactivity series sometimes includes non-metals such as carbon, hydrogen and silicon. Silicon can be extracted by reducing silicon dioxide with different substances and the equation for one possible reaction is shown here, where two carbon in the solid state reacts with silicon dioxide in the solid state and produces silicon in the solid state and two carbon monoxide in the gas state. And we've been asked to explain what this reaction shows about the position of silicon in the reactivity series. Now you aren't taught about silicon extraction but you do need to know about metal extraction and the same rules apply. Firstly that the reactivity series lists the elements in order of most reactive at the top of the series and least reactive at the bottom. And reduction, one of the meanings of a reduction reaction is the removal of oxygen from a compound. And one of the ways that we can carry this out is by a displacement reaction. And that is where a more reactive element takes the place of a less reactive element in a compound. And you can see from the equation that we've been given at the beginning, the silicon dioxide is silicon bonded with oxygen, but at the end it is converted into silicon by itself. So it has had the oxygen removed, it has been reduced. And the carbon must be the reducing agent because at the beginning it is by itself, but at the end it has got the oxygen that it has removed from the silicon. And what this is proving is that the carbon is displacing the silicon from the silicon dioxide. It is bonded to oxygen at the end and silicon is not. And this must be because carbon is more reactive than the silicon. Or we could say silicon is less reactive than carbon. Or alternatively, we could say that carbon is above silicon in the reactivity series. One mark for the carbon displacing the silicon and one mark for commenting on their relative positions in the reactivity series or their relative reactivity. Aluminium also reduces silicon dioxide. Carbon is used rather than aluminium to reduce silicon dioxide because carbon is cheaper than aluminium. Carbon can be obtained by heating coal and aluminium is obtained from aluminium oxide. Explain why aluminium is more expensive than carbon. So heating coal to produce carbon will require some energy. However, aluminium is obtained by electrolysis from aluminium oxide. And this is needed because aluminium is more reactive than carbon, so cannot be obtained by reduction from that method. And in electrolysis, we need to melt the aluminium oxide at high temperatures in an electrolysis cell, and then supply a large amount of energy continuously and separate out the aluminium from the oxygen. And so this is obviously going to be expensive, but we've been asked to explain why aluminium is more expensive than carbon. And so the presence of that word more in our question means we need to use comparative language, not just say that it is expensive, but say that it is more expensive. And the reason why it is more expensive is that more energy is needed. So not just a lot of energy or a great deal of energy, we need to be comparative, much more energy is needed. And that gets us our second mark after saying that electrolysis is needed to extract the aluminium and that would be our first mark. Magnesium also reduces silicon dioxide and the equation for the reaction is 2Mg solid plus SiO2 solid turns into Si solid and 2MgO solid. And so this is very similar to the previous question where carbon was used to remove the oxygen from the silicon dioxide. And we've been asked to give one reason why the products are difficult to separate if magnesium is used to reduce the silicon dioxide. And that's implying that this difficulty wasn't present when we were using carbon to extract the silicon. And when we look at the product, we see that we produce silicon in the solid state, just like in the carbon equation. 
and we produce magnesium oxide in the solid state. Whereas when we used carbon, we produced carbon monoxide, which was a gas. And so the difficulty arises in this case because both of our products are a solid. And that means how do we separate one solid from another? It's far easier to allow the products to naturally separate when one of them is a gas because that gas will just leave the reaction mixture and the silicon will be present by itself. But when we use magnesium, both of the products are a solid. Si2H6 is a covalent compound of silicon and hydrogen. Complete the figure below to show the outer shell electrons in a molecule of Si2H6. And you can see that we've got some element symbols in this space here, and the electron shells are currently shown as empty circles. Covalent bonding occurs when non-metal atoms bond together by sharing pairs of electrons. And this produces a type of structure referred to as simple molecular, and the particles in this structure are molecules. These can be represented as a displayed formula, like I'm showing here, where the lines are representing a covalent bond, or as dot and cross diagrams, which is what we've been requested to show here. And typically the electrons are represented as crosses or dots. We might also use circles or little letter E's, but I'm going to use crosses and dots. So everywhere electron shells overlap is a covalent bond. And this is typically a single covalent bond. And I'm showing single covalent bonds here with a single line. Since silicon is in group four of the periodic table, it will have four outer shell electrons. And I will show these as four crosses. And I'll do the silicon on the right hand side first. It's got four overlaps with four other atoms. So I will put one cross into each space where there is an overlap of electron shells. And then the silicon on the left needs to be treated in the same way. It has also got four overlaps, which means it's got four covalent bonds. And you can see in the space where the two silicon atoms are meeting, in this overlap region here, I have got two crosses. This is the single covalent bond between those two silicon atoms. And then where each of those six hydrogen atoms meets the silicon, we need to put a dot. And so each one of these six spaces is a covalent bond with a dot and a cross or two crosses in the case of this one in the middle. And this is what we need to do to get the single mark. We could use all crosses or all dots, but typically we'll use a dot to represent the electrons from one atom and a cross to represent the electrons from another type of atom.